Our next guest is Democratic candidate Cecilia Berkowitz. Hi, Hi. nice to meet you as well. Nice to be here and meet you all and speak about the arts. Well, your background uh, was in uh, finance, wasn't it? Uh, correct. I've studied management and finance at the Wharton School. I worked many different places at Tiffany and Company, where they taught me a lot about their type of arts. You know, Tiffany designs through jewelry. They have a foundation. They support the arts. Um, there's a lot of artistic people involved in their company, the jewelry designers and others. And we learned a lot about the history of New York City as well. So I worked at Tiffany for over three years, thought about staying there forever. But I decided to uh, go back to school soon after, studied accounting in an MBA program at Rutgers, more aligned with my undergrad interests and other work and internships at Prudential and other places. Um, after, after I finished graduate school, I worked, uh, started working downtown for a CPA firm um, on the Lower East Side and, and on Wall Street at the time. It's now just in, downtown by where his family is and by the mayor's former press secretary, Stu Glozer. They're good friends. I also worked a bit at a French accounting firm. I studied French as a major undergrad as well and know a bit about French culture, uh, Florence, uh, Italy. So my boyfriend's from Algeria with relatives in France. So I do a lot with uh, you know international aspect of business as well. Well, we are been talking a lot about uh, ways of financing the arts. So I guess an accountant would be somebody who might actually find ways to do that. Uh, we give tax breaks to major corporations to keep them in New York. Do you think it makes economic sense to support our cultural institutions yes. in the same way? I do. I think that one of the most valuable aspects to a large city like Paris, like New York, like some of the other major cities is the, is the arts. And I, I spend a lot of time in Philadelphia as well with the government there, where they have museums, arts, culture, and I think it's extremely important to keep it in New York City where it's even better. So yes, I think it's important to help, help fund the arts. And I uh, wrote a previous speech in which I criticized both the Democrats and Republicans, uh, the typical Democrats and Republicans, for their, um, their way that they fund programs. The Republicans sometimes are only worried about their own household and don't reach out to support other, other people like artists, which is very important. And that's why Mayor Bloomberg called himself going Democrat when he said he wanted to help out uh, different organizations. I know he gives a lot of funding to the arts. Now, wait, 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 he gives a lot of personal funding to the arts. Of he has uh, cut back on city funding to the arts. Uh, yeah, we'll his people usually tell him what to do. One of the topics here is whether the city should give 1% of well, I, its I, budget yeah, to well, the well, arts. Yeah, I know there's a lot of budget problems right now. And well, I, I know that the, I read that part. Yeah, he gave a lot of personal funding to the arts and to African Americans and a lot of people. So he calls that going Democrat. Well, his people advise him on the city. I guess that's his independent aspect. I think that uh, a lot of the Democrats in government also uh, do something like a, a not very, uh, um, a hardworking, uh, responsible way of allocating money and that they tax, tax people, even an artist who maybe makes a few hundred thousand dollars a year, they might need that money. Maybe they have uh, unpaid uh, bills, uh, debt, loans, uh, You know artists who make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. You must be hanging out with Jeff Koons otherwise. Sometimes the household. <laughs> well, I don't know how much they make. Uh, my mom has a friend who's an artist in Hoboken. Her husband was a professor, a math professor. So sometimes if it's a wife with a husband, in my town where I grew up, the librarian in elementary school, her husband was some sort of artist. They normally live in one or seven, several million dollar houses. So the, the artists we have in the suburbs, like Westchester, they sometimes have enough money, but then again, they have children's educations and uh, retirement accounts they might not be able to afford if they got a medical expense. There's different kinds of artists. Of course, there's the poor, starving artist. And there's also uh, the wealthier artists. So I don't really know what was, it's very funny because uh, those are artists. But uh, yeah, I mean, we know different kinds of artists. The point is, if you have like a gallery, let's say you open a gallery or some sort of business. And um, yeah, if you open, say, a gallery in Chelsea and you make a few hundred thousand dollars or something in one year um, that you are able to keep as income, you kind of need that money. So to have that, the point is they're, they're usually not very wealthy, even if they make that in one year. In different ways, maybe they take a side job, maybe they're an art professor, maybe they get some sort of uh, job. So uh, because of this, they need their money when they make a few hundred thousand dollars. So is that, is that the best thing that the city can do, do you think, to support people working in culture, like who own galleries or artists? Is, just keeping their taxes low so that they can afford uh -oh. to do their art? Um, 
Yes, well, I think it's important to not overtax people when they start to make a living when they still don't have enough money, and that's what my accounting professors at Rutgers uh, in the department when I was uh, went back as a student a few years ago, more than a few years ago, taxing people who barely have enough money. They would call them uh, several hundred thousand dollars a year. He was calling them rich. They don't have enough money. Businesses that don't have enough money, uh, perhaps over one million dollars, they were taxing exorbitantly. And you can't afford this. I mean, most of the people sitting here, if you make one time three or five hundred thousand dollars, you don't want more than half of it taxed away or a large percent. So that's a serious problem we're talking about, a one-time uh, job that you get, maybe that job won't exist anymore. So it's a very serious problem in this country when uh, people are, uh, are taxed when they can't afford it. Um, yeah, so uh, that's, that's what we're thinking is that uh, that's the Democrat, I, I, the Bill de Blasio system where he tries to make people poor and, and my union endorsed him by not advocating pay raises, by uh, taxing people who, I mean, it's very, very serious. If you can't afford to like, go to work, you can't afford, you have to take out loans, there's no more money for you. And uh, he tries to fund, say, a children's uh, uh, educational program by borrowing from people who barely have enough household expenses. You can't move every year because you're getting poor because of, uh, they're trying to make people poor and then tax them on top of it. So it's a very serious problem in our country. They've been talking about it since the previous Obama election. And I think this applies especially to artists as well. A lot of them might be in education and other fields with uh, budget problems. So uh, yeah, so that's what was. Well, they say that the way to make a small fortune as an artist is to start off with a big fortune. Um, well, I guess that's, that's true. I certainly, I didn't go into art. I'm, well, first of all, I don't have that kind of talent. Second of all, I don't have that kind of funding. Um, yeah, I know that uh, artists aren't necessarily the most uh, lucrative fields to go into unless you happen to have a lot of expertise. Well, that said, I do have a friend from uh, growing up. She's now, she has a PhD in art history and now has a job, I think, as an appraiser, if I remember correctly. So they are able to earn a living. I think she might even be uh, teaching at the college level as a professor and doing academic research. So there are opportunities for people who study art, but you have to put out a lot of money. I think her family was somewhat rich, um, more than most people, in order to uh, pay that much to go into art history. You're, you're, you seem to have a lot of rich friends, but... Um, well, they're not very rich. That's um, the whole point. They can't afford these taxes, yeah. I, 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 I'm wondering... Um, no, you're saying a new artist who maybe has a talent, but doesn't have a lot of money. Right. Well, what was your own, what, what was your own uh, experience as a kid becoming turned on by art, by music, by painting, by dance, by whatever? Okay. Well, I did study the French horn for many years. Uh, my, I, my parents uh, paid for lessons uh, starting when I was in fifth grade. I tried the violin. I didn't like it, so I switched to the French horn. I played in college when it wasn't very popular in uh, wind ensemble orchestra bands. And uh, then I did stop because I didn't have the talents. Like I basically uh, was tone deaf in elementary school and uh, decided to teach myself how to hear unusually uh, the musical notes by uh, cupping my ears. And now I appreciate music, recognize the music. But you picked one of the hardest just... instruments in the world. Well, to play yeah, you have on. to hear the tones to be able to uh, make the sounds and, and have it uh, have it sound out the right the right notes. And there are some challenges when it gets more difficult. Yeah, it was somewhat challenging, and uh, some people worked harder than me, like the valedictorian types. Someone was better who wasn't talented. But I just decided to go into things I liked, I liked more, like French or finance or other interests. But uh, I think it's good when you hear something like the Carmina Burana or very nice pieces, Vivaldi, the Four Seasons, you recognize the music and it's a really good, like Mozart, you start to recognize the patterns. There's a lot that you're able to appreciate about music. And art, the same thing. I mean, I, I, I took art history. I wasn't very good at it. I went to Florence. I saw Botticelli, all the famous artists. And uh, it's good to know things about it and be able to recognize that talent. But uh, it's a bit expensive. I mean, not everyone can afford private lessons or to, or to pay for a college course or go to a different country all the, when they're at that age. So yeah, I think there should be more funding and programs there. And that's basically what I'm trying to say is that from the accounting standpoint, it's very important to spend extra time and dedicate a few uh, salaried employees to uh, scrutinize the budget and um, eliminate people who maybe aren't the same people who even attended tonight, might be at their job, uh, if they are there, not doing anything, collecting salaries. When I showed up at my job at City College, the security guard said, that person over there, she's been collecting a large salary for years. And I don't know what that means, but it sounds like they probably don't deserve it. And so there's a lot of people like that probably on the budget. Also, there's buildings that way. Buildings they've sold, probably other buildings that are collecting, I don't know, uh, I don't know, nothing, just collecting dust. And we need to sell buildings that aren't being used or are being used uh, ineff inefficiently. So we think it's important to uh, sell buildings, sell salaries, 
um, I mean, get rid of uh, salaries for people who, uh, who eliminate salaries for people who aren't doing their job, and also, uh, um, you know, try to uh, do things to fix the budget. Um, yeah, that way, um, perhaps uh, find sources of revenue more, such as the taxicab medallions, examine the pension system that everyone's talking about now, make sure it's good for both the people and the city, and also save money. So if they look at the budget, as most of us do in our own bank accounts, or you know, if you have your own bank account, you see there's been bank fees, you see other accounts offer better interest rates, that's the same thing we need to do with the government budget. And I'm convinced they're not doing that, and that's why they want to tax people who earn a living who can't afford it. Cecilia Berkowitz, thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. I'm glad to meet you all. And I'd be happy to speak with you afterward. Yeah, I took luck. a bunch of time, yeah. Nice meeting you. Different so kinds long. of artists in the city.